Here we have a 2023 Land Rover Defender. And this one comes in the 90X trim level. And the beautiful Gondwana stone. And then I believe we have Acorn perforated leather interior. Now the engine consists of a three liter turbocharged inline six, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. That's giving us 395 horsepower. And with this one being the 90X, this is gonna be our two door model. So as we come to the front end here, we have our LED headlamps, LED fog lights, and we have our LED signature lights there, those little halos. Really love the look of this up close. Wasn't feeling it when they first came out, but after getting in this one for a minute, really starting to love it. And then down here we have 22 inch aluminum wheels. Then we have the Land Rover Brembo brakes as well. Just a really beautiful, beautiful vehicle, especially in this color. Now we get passive keyless entry on the doors. And just this door trim, I really like how they kept the kind of painted door there. They didn't actually put like a door sill there. The door sill itself is here. And then like everything feels really nice. Even the plastic feels like it's not gonna cut you. So I'm really impressed by that. And we do get a Meridian surround sound system in this. Power door lock controls there. Power mirror controls. Of course, we can auto fold by hitting both those buttons there. And then your blind spot monitors are there. And then we can actually use this knob to control either side. And then we have one touch up and down driver and passenger windows. And memory seat controls there. And then we have our electronic parking brake, which we can just pull by hitting the foot, excuse me, pull this when our foot's on the brake to release and then press that to engage. And there we have our front driver's seat with power and power lumbar support. And I believe that's a 12 way seat for both the driver and front passenger. And then if you wanna to get to the back, to pull this up here and then we can slide the seat up And then we can just step back on in there. So I'm gonna demonstrate how much room is back there. Just gonna hop in here. And y'all just bear with me, please. Then we just hit that button. Now it's not fast, but there's my leg room with the seat in front of me adjusted for someone of my size. So I'm actually quite impressed that I have, I mean, my knees are not being scrunched back here. Let me say that. And I do have about an inch or so of headroom, even with that beautiful panoramic sunroof in the way. And that's my view out the left window. But of course you're gonna be in this thing, hopefully going off road and having some fun, so cup holders in the middle seat there. And we do get three stage heated outboard seats back here along with two USB-C charging ports there. And of course our AC vents here, we can close those and open them as we see fit. And then if you look over here, the cup holders are actually down below. That's one of the perks of not having doors back here. But let me go ahead and check out the cargo space. And before I do that, I do like how they put this kind of skylight in here. That's pretty neat. This will be fun. Ooh. Now I definitely recommend getting a 110 or a 130 if you're gonna be having rear passengers regularly because that is not fun but it's kind of cool if you're just gonna do it one time. It's for the experience. <laughs> now back here, we can adjust our air suspension. And 
if you want to change your loading height or whatever. And not a lot of cargo space, but if you want to, you can fold the second row down and when the seats are up far enough, those will fold flat and then you have much more space, which is probably, it's easier to show it on this side. This is how I would have this if I were to get a 90. Just have those seats down all the time. But if you need to have passengers, it's nice to have that flexibility, I suppose. And then back here, 12 volt. Then we can hang bags back here if we don't want them all over the place while we're going off-road. And we have a pocket back here as well. So, I mean, it's definitely a usable vehicle, even though it's not necessarily the biggest one you can get. Of course, we can put our premium fuel back here. Which is what I recommend running on these Land Rovers. And like I said, 12-way power seats for the front and there's the passenger side there. And I do love this huge pocket here. Then we have USB-C charge ports so your passenger can just lay their phone there and charge. And it just looks really nice too. I'm going to go in here and pop the hood so we can take a look at the engine bay. And hopefully this won't be too hard to open. There we go. Nice and straightforward. Just push that up there after popping it. And it's mostly covered up, but... There's that three liter turbocharged inline six buried in there. But now let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat after I finished putting it back where it was. And there's that second row already getting in the way now we do get a heated leather wrap steering wheel here which is really nice and i really love this kind of it reminds me of the old hummers just the feel of the steering wheel and just the design of it just that really rugged look but one of my most impressed i should say what i was most impressed by with this defender is going to be this radio here. I'm used to the older Land Rover, you know, the radios they put in the Range Rover Sports, but this radio here is very, very crisp. The picture is really, really nice. It's simple, but the color scheme is really pretty and all that. But you do get, I'll show you here, we get AM, FM, XM radio, and we also get Bluetooth audio. And then we also have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto too. But what's really neat is that I have my slope assist here, compass here, and it's really easy to scroll through, see what my differentials are up to. Approach angles, we have wade sensing on here. And then what I really like here was this screen. So we have the energy impact and what it does is it tells you how much each device it's using so my heated steering wheel how much that's using as i turn that off you can see it goes away fog lamps when i turn those off goes away heated seat when i turn that off it just shows the ac's using most well all the power now and i just think that's really neat so you can see what's going on with your vehicle and you can save on gas if you want to or your battery level or whatever but that was one of my favorite things about the system itself but you can also of course track your driving style so on and so forth and there's our backup camera there we also get a bird's eye view then we can toggle whether we want the sensors on and off making noise 
and we have an on-road and off-road view which is really cool and then a towing view as well now for the eight-speed automatic you just pull this button back here pull down for drive and then you can tap over to manually shift if you want to do that and you can tap up for neutral you got to hold it there and then hit the button push all the way up for reverse press p for park so pretty straightforward now for the dual zone automatic climate controls you can adjust them like this and then you can push them on each side and you can control the seat whether you want the heated seat or the cooled seat both of those get three stages and then we can even toggle our auto stop here hill descent and then what's really cool is you hit that button there and you can toggle your drive mode so whether you want sand rock crawl wade the configurable one but then what i would probably use most often would be the eco or the comfort program unless i was going off-road i'd use those other ones and just a lot of configurability like i said that air suspension is really really nice and very quick now one thing i did think was weird with this volume knob and the power button is all the way over here to the right but what's actually really easy to use for volume in particular is going to be this scroll knob here so you can actually toggle it and it's really easy to do especially while you're driving and then down here we have a USB-C and a USB-A input, 12 volt there. Tons of space in the actual tray, or I should say underneath the cup holders here in the center console there. Really like that. And then we have the cup holders, wireless charging pad, and then we also have a cooler in here as well. So that's what makes this so handy is you don't necessarily get a traditional center console cubby space, but you do get plenty of space there and you can still keep your drinks cold there. Now let's look at this sunroof here. We do get one touch tilt and slide there. So really, really nice. And we have a one touch power sunshade as well. And there's a look at the back seat from up here. I'm trying to make sure I don't leave anything out. We get a lockable glove compartment here. Owner's manuals here. And then going back to the steering wheel, we have our shortcuts here so we can pull up our navigation here. And then we can use this for our track list or radio station favorites there. Now all of that is customizable on here. You can set all of that up. For your favorite buttons and then we have voice recognition there like i said it's a volume scroll knob there and then to the right side we have our adaptive cruise control and lane departure so you can toggle all of that on and we can adjust the gap for that adaptive cruise there and then there's there is our heads up display and i do love the crispness of this all digital gauge cluster here it looks really nice without being too much now over here those are your turn signals headlamps put the autos on hold that there and then turn it off holding it again and then you can actually just turn it a little bit to turn the headlights on same thing with that it takes getting used to but i actually like it because it's just really neat same thing with the fog lamps And then high beams there. And then we have our windshield wiper controls here. And then auto, low, high. And then we can set our intermittent there. And then we also have the rear wipers we can control there. And of course, pull up here for the front wiper fluid and then pull if someone doesn't have the rear wiper fluid, you might have to do something with that. Ranger or Land Rover always makes it interesting, some of these controls, so I'll have to get back with you on that. 
and there's our push button start. And finally, here's our key fob. But next, we're gonna go ahead and take this Defender 90X out on the road for a quick test drive. So the eco mode so far is just really, really good. When I put my foot down a little bit, I can feel the turbo working. And then when I'm just coasting, it just tries to give as little power as possible. And it just keeps it really quiet as well. And there's the auto stop. I'm gonna change, change my drive mode, excuse me. I'm gonna put in this comfort mode and see how that changes things. Yeah, definitely a lot easier to, to accelerate with the pedal. You can feel it's ready to go now. Just with a little bit of force. But overall, I really like the driving position of the Defender. I have a kind of, I guess it's a hybrid between maybe driving a Ford Bronco and a Range Rover. And I'm sure that's kind of what they were going for. But I'm sitting up really high. The hood is sloped down really well. I still feel like I'm in a very expensive Land Rover, but just really drives like a Jeep in a good way. Give it a little throttle here. Yeah, really good pull from that Turbo 6. And I'm gonna put my foot in it just a tad getting on the interstate here. Very good acceleration. And I'm gonna put the cruise on now. Now with Land Rover, like I said earlier, some controls are just backwards because this is, I guess because it's a British vehicle, I don't know. But <laughs> I had to actually set it up to get the cruise to come on as opposed to most vehicles, you have to set it down. But I have the lane departure on now. Really? I mean, that's lane centering. Very impressed, very, very impressed by that. I wish I could have gone down another exit. But I said lane departure and after testing it out, that's definitely lane centering. So it's nice to have that. And with a vehicle that's six figures, I shouldn't be that surprised, but it's a Land Rover. But lane centering and adaptive cruise, very impressed by. And very, very smooth all around. And there's the auto stop again. Now, I heard my license plate tag in the back rattle just a little bit as I was given the Defender throttle, and it made me realize this Defender is there. It's crazy when you're used to driving like Broncos and Wranglers, though, you know, vehicles in that segment, you hear a lot of weird rattles and blah, blah, blah just going on around you, and you just kind of get used to it because it's a. Uh, you know, it was an off-road vehicle, whatever. But this just, 
it has Range Rover like quality, I guess, a luxury feel to it in the sense that I'm hearing nothing other than what's outside of this vehicle. And I'm barely hearing that. What's crazy is I actually hear the engine and the exhaust more than anything because the cabin acoustics in here are incredible. It's really quiet inside. It does a really good job at shielding me from what's going on around me. I mean, I'm just really, really impressed by that for a vehicle that's supposed to be out here going off road. Now, the Defender is definitely going to be much pricier than anything else in the segment, especially with how the used car market is now. And even the new car market, everything still has markups that they can get it. But I mean, long term, I'm sure these will hold their value. And they're just really, other than the price tag, the vehicle itself is extremely practical. You have an inline six turbo, eight speed automatic. You don't have the 10 speed or necessarily a four cylinder in this one in particular. And just having all the safety technology, even though this is running at 108,000, when you buy it through Auto Collection of Murfreesboro, which they have pretty good prices on their luxury vehicles, but it's still relatively for what you get, you're paying a you're paying for a Range Rover that goes off road basically. So, with that being said, you're expecting that. But final thoughts on the Defender, like I said, it's expensive, but it's pretty much in its own segment, so it is what it is. You definitely get a lot for the money in terms of quality and luxury. And if you can afford one, I definitely recommend you get one because these things are great. But this will bring me to the end of my review of the 2023 Land Rover Defender 90X.